But I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. Quran is mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet That's tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you, peace about your friends and let us have some good time together. Uh, today our topic as you see on the screen, we are talking about gambling. Uh, you know, today uh, YouTube recommended a video for me and I found it very interesting. And the video was from a very well-known person, his name is Ahmad Dida, who don't even speak Arabic. Yet they call him Sheikh. It's like Sheikh Uthman, he is right. You can be Sheikh without speaking Arabic. So here a Christian person, he says to him, well, what Quran, what, what Quran can do? I mean, you are coming to debate the Christians, but what your Quran can do? So be that, you have an answer. He silenced all the Christians. And that, so look, Islam through the Quran, through this one verse, it eliminated four major evils. One verse, I quote, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ya ayyuhal ladhin amanu, say, O you who believe, inna mal hamru, most certainly intoxicants, wal maisiru and gambling, wal ansabu and fortune telling, wal aslamu and idol worship, rizum min amri shaitan, are an abomination of Satan's handiwork, fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun. When this verse was revealed, wine barrels were emptied in the streets of Medina, never to be refilled. The most perfect, complete, and lasting revolution in the history of mankind. One verse, and the evil was abolished for good. <laughs> if we go to the verse we, we, he is mentioning, we will see that even the Quran did not even forbid alcohol. And actually, Muhammad was copying Paul in 1st Corinthians chapter 6, and we will go there. But let us go here and see what the Quran is really saying. Remember, one verse eliminates all evil in this world. You will notice that the Quran even did not say that it is forbidden, neither gambling, neither alcohol, neither adultery, Neither any of those are forbidden. It says, which means avoid them. And there's a huge difference between avoid them and it's forbidden. Avoid them mean, as try your best to avoid them. Hmm? It's not a sin. It is not a sin. And I will open my Skype soon, and I will ask the Muslims, what is the punishment for gambling or for drinking? Now, for sure, they will say to me, the Hadith, right? One verse eliminated all four evil. One of them is gambling, one of them is fortunate, fortune teller, one of them is a drinking, but do you know that Muslim they can do gambling over horses or camels? 
and they are forbidden to do play chess. This is the gambling they are talking about. You see, when they say gambling, you think it's really gambling. You want to translate the word gambling here. This is about playing chess. You know, like, you know those uh, like Persian games? All of them are Persian games. Like the one you use, the, what they call it? The one have numbers? But those are people they play just for fun, including chess. If we go right now to the Hadith, and this is telling you that Muhammad is really evil. <clears throat> Ali used to say that the chess is miss, uh, a misser of the foreigners, okay? Maser of the foreigners. It's the it's the gambling of the foreigners. <laughs> but this is not gambling, you know. And then he continues saying here that nobody play chess except the sinner. Nobody play play chess except the sinner. Let me show you more hadith about this. So you can laugh. So we can gamble using money, real money, over horses, over camels. And the Muslims, they say, oh, this is because it helped for jihad. <laughs> Look at the excuse. Uh, let us uh, find some reference. Let us read this one. This one is good and showing you how, how mental Muhammad is. And this is Sahih. So they cannot say to you, this is weak and you know, this game. He who played Narchir, which is actually, uh, you know, you know, like the, this table, you know, like they open it, you have, you, they play it in Turkey and many other places. The one who do that, he is the same as somebody, his hands is in the swine meat and the blood of the swine. This is in the hadith, but this is not gambling. And this has nothing to do with gambling. We go to different hadith. All of those actually, like this one is Sahih. So the Muslim cannot say to us, uh, this is uh, accepted, this is rejected, then you know, you know the game. Uh, let us see a different hadith. Just to show you how they try to fool people about what is forbidden in Islam. What's wrong with playing this game? What's exactly the problem? You see, gambling is something different. Gambling is you put bet money over anything. We, we can gamble over anything. We do not need to play game. You can say, if it rains tomorrow, what do you think? I bet it's going to rain tomorrow. Do you bet against me? <laughs> Gambling is something different. So the, 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 the stupidity is beyond imagination. And Muslims, obviously, when they translate the Quran, they don't even know what they are translating. Nowhere even the word gambling is mentioned in the Quran. As you see, this is not gambling. What does this have to do with gambling? And how this can be gambling? And if we forbid gambling, then we forbid the act of gambling, not the, the, not the game. The game itself is not a gambling. 
chess is not a gambling. So what does this have to do? with gambling. If we go to different reference, let's see. <clears throat> uh, let us see if we can find this one. This is about chess. Here it says Ibn Omar when he found the blah 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 playing. And you see here they are they are talking about uh, two games actually, not only uh, not only chess. Uh, chess and uh, playing with this. Uh, uh, let me let me show you a picture so you can know what I'm talking about. And actually the funny is this is the very popular game in all over Islamic countries. And then the Muslim, they say it's forbidden. So why you play it then if it's forbidden? If it's forbidden, why you play it? Obviously it's not. This is the game we are talking about. I'm sure now many of you knows what I'm talking about. You know, I'm trying just to find the word for it, uh, which I don't know in English. Uh, so this has nothing to do with gambling, unless you, you know, you bet, uh, it. but this is, can be happening for anything. If you go uh, for hunting, if you say, uh, if I get the tiger first, I, I win and you pay me, etc. This is gambling. So it's, uh, gambling is a different story. So here you see that the, the, the illusion and the uh, misleading in the Islamic translation when they translate the Quran. And then he says here that the one who played chess, nobody played chess except someone he is a sinner. There's no good in chess, but the chess is a, is a game, will make you smarter, teach you how to have patience, how to think, how to be careful, how to be a patient, uh, how to uh, plan for things. It's a very, very, very healthy game. Which, so what, we, what, what a human should do? You see, music is forbidden, chess is forbidden, this game is forbidden, so what is left? What's exactly left? Sex. Sex and food. So when the Muslim, they bring to us those verses and they mention the word gambling, in fact, the word gambling never mentioned in the verse. Same time. And actually, we can go and read the interpretation for the, 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 uh, for the verse. You see, I can go right now and see the interpretation, and you will see that it's not what they are claiming. In the same time, many of you do not know that this verse came to Muhammad in chapter 5, verse number 90. But in fact, this is one of the last chapters Muhammad he received. If we check, you will find it came almost when Muhammad was dying. If we go here, we will find that chapter 5, let us go to chapter 5. According to Revelation, it came as 112. So the Muslim, they live their life playing, if this is gambling, playing gambling, drinking, and doing all those things which is bad. And now Muhammad, he have two, three years to live. And now he decided to forbid gambling. But look what happened. A group of Muslims, one of them, his name is Abdullah, Abdul Rahman ibn Awf. He invites some Muslim to his house and they start drinking until they get drunk. And then they stood up to pray. And then inst instead of reading the chapter of Al Kafirun correctly, they start skipping verses and skipping words. And then the verse came down saying, Oh, who you believe, don't drink when you are praying. But does not say it's forbidden? Nowhere in the Quran it says that drinking alcohol is forbidden. Actually, I can show you sheikhs 
saying th so. Let me look for it. Okay, actually, I just found one. This is Morocco, word news. Nothing in Quran says alcohol is haram. And this is Al Arabiya TV, Saudi Arabia. This is what? Saudi Arabia TV. And this is in Saudi Arabia, in the heart of the Islamic countries. Nowhere in the Quran it says. And this is a newspaper publishing this from Morocco. Saudi writer Abdullah al bukhid he has a claim on Monday that there's not a single verse in the Holy Quran forbid alcohol, adding that the Quran does not even mention the punishment of our drinking alcohol. And he said, I find, you can read with me, I did not find anything in the Holy Quran that forbid alcohol, and there is no punishment too. Abdullah al bakhid he wrote that in Twitter. This is the tweet. Now, the verse in front of us, I will open my Skype, and I challenge any Muslim to show me one verse in the Quran, make a punishment for those who drink or do gambling or play chess or listen to music. Or actually, I challenge you to find me even a punishment for rape. Even rape. So when the Muslim, they speak about things, you know, they are the one who kisses stones and they are the one who accuse you of adultery. They are the one who do muta and five, six minute marriage, as Mimi Hijab, he said, and they are the one who accuse you of adultery. They are the one who take interest from the bank, but they give it different names. And they claim that they don't take interest. They are the one who practice pedophile act. And they speak about ethic in the West. Let me open Skype in case there's any Muslim would like to join us. He's more than welcome. If we go to the, to the Bible, we will find that the Quran, actually, this verse is starting from Paul. But Paul makes it so clear that no one will enter heaven. No one is going to enter heaven. Let me find the verse. Give me a second. All right. I find it really funny when a Muslim he try you know, to speak about uh, God and holiness and all kind of uh, all kind of issues. And you know, remember the Quran said that we will go to what Allah He forbid for the Jews too, because you will notice that the Quran says clearly that Allah did not forbid those things to the Jews and to the Christians, which is very weird. Uh, I'm opening my Skype. It's open, I think, yeah.
Corinthian, uh, yeah, first Corinthian. This is the Bible here. And you will see that it's almost as somebody copy paste from the word of Paul and he is putting it in the Quran. And remember, Muhammad here is almost dying. This is the end of his life. Shouldn't those things come in the beginning? I mean, you are almost dead. And the Muslims all this time, they are drinking. And you, your God never forgot. Never, I mean, they are drinking in front of him to the point they are drunk. They go to the mosque and they are totally drunk. They fell apart. People, they are laughing at them. So if you, if you read with me here, you will see it's speaking about the righteousness and speaking about those who they are going to go to heaven. You know, no thief, thief will not go to heaven. Muhammad is a thief. The people who drink and get drunk, they make it like a lifestyle, they don't go to heaven. And they listen in front of you, all of those things, you do them including homosexuality too. There's not a single verse in the Quran speaking about somebody who is homosexual will go to heaven or to hell. The Quran actually says, whoever says shahada, he go to heaven. Not a single verse. In fact, the Quran teach that if somebody is a homosexual, you beat him with sandals. That's it. This is the penalty. So imagine adultery. The, the penalty can be very severe. But homosexuality will beat him with sandals. And if you don't believe me, I can show you the verse from the Quran. And here we notice that Islam is not really a religion. It's just a Muhammad trying to copy other people, trying to make a religion. And this religion is full of holes. Not only the narrative have holes, the Quran is full of holes. Because it doesn't make sense that there's a God, he make verses or he make a book, and then he forgot to tell us what, what is homosexuality in Islam is. Why, there's no homosexual? If you read my book, Sex and Allah, you will see that the whole town is homosexual. The family of Muhammad if not Muhammad himself. Here it says, if two men among you are guilty of such an act, punish them both of them. Okay, what is the punishment? In the Quran, there is no punishment. Nowhere it says what the punishment is. In fact, the word in Arabic, it doesn't say punish them. It says, fa'aduhuma. Aduhuma, heard them. Turn in front of you. Heard them. Not punish them. This is why if we go and read the interpretation, we will find it says, beat them with sandals. Beat them with sandals. So, Quran is not a book of God. Quran does not even forbid what it should be forbidden. No verse in the Quran is forbidden alcohol. Actually, alcohol, according to the Quran, in different verse, it's a miracle of Allah. If we go here, we will find the Quran saying the following. Allah himself is a praising, being a drunk, claiming that this is a miracle, a sign from Allah. Chapter 16, verse number 67. You ask the Muslim, they say to you, this is before this uh, uh, alcohol became forbidden. Where is the alcohol became forbidden? Nowhere. The other verse says, Ishtanibu, avoid it. And if the Quran is saying in one verse, according to them, alcohol is forbidden, how Allah here he is praising alcohol. Change the translator, because some most of the translation are very confusing and they lie a lot when they translate.
Look what it says here. This is was before the order of the forbation of alcohol drink. Where is the order of forbation alcohol drink? They will say to you in the Hadith. The Quran is not a book of God. The Hadith is the book of God. Because how Muhammad received his order? Didn't he receive his order, especially about law and order in the Quran? Is the Quran is the book of law and order? Or the Quran is about the flying carpet of cinnamon? So when this fool did that, he says that for uh, evil eliminated in the Quran, I challenge the Muslim to show me how those for evil eliminated in the Quran. Neither gambling is forbidden. Neither drinking is forbidden. And as you see, the God of Islam, he is claiming that this is a sign from Allah. It is a sign from Allah. Remember when this fool, Nadir Ahmad, he called me and he says he claimed that Quran, according to scientists study, uh, those who drink alcohol, they will have a syndrome for their children. This is false. You know, those things can happen if you are addicted for anything. Addiction, this is a different story. Do we have any Muslim? And if you read this story here, the verse which the dad is reading, you will see that this is because a bunch of Muslims, they were drunk, and this is at the end of the life of Muhammad, which means Muslims all this time are drinking and praying. What a party time. Read it carefully. I went to a group of migrants and helpers, and they said to me, let us feed you and give you wine to drink. This was before it was made unlawful, okay? So I went to the field where they were, had roasted a camel, a head, and a barrel of wine, a barrel of wine, not, guys, not a bottle of wine. Do you see the word barrel? The Muslims don't drink in a bottle of wine, they drink in a barrel of wine. The whole barrel of wine. And this is at the end of the life of the time of Muhammad. He's almost dead. So all this time Muhammad did not notice that this is bad. So look what happened. They start drinking and eating as usual. And then when time for a prayer, they stood up and they start falling apart. Here it says, I ate and drank with them. Then I mentioned the immigrant, the helpers, he said, the immigrants are better than the helpers. One of the men grabbed one uh, of uh, uh, Joe Bones and uh, of the, uh, of the uh, head we ate. And he hit me with it. The Muslim now, the good believers, the companion of Muhammad. Those are the companion of Muhammad. The companion of Muhammad, they are drunk, fighting and hitting each other. So now they ate the head of the camel. One of the good companion of Muhammad, he grabbed a bone of the camel and he hit his brother in Allah. He hit me with it severe in my nose. In the process, I went to the Messenger of Allah and give him peace and informed him in what happened. And Allah exalted is he revealed about me and the matter of drinking. So, so if those guys did not fight, Allah will not send a verse. I mean, do you see the stupidity? So if those guys did not fight and hit each other, and nobody went to Muhammad, no verse, no, no Quran. They are drinking a barrel of wine. You see, when, uh, when we speak about Jesus drinking uh, uh, some uh, uh, juice, some they say it's wine, some they say it's not, doesn't matter really. But we don't see a bunch of drunk people. <laughs> we see a very wise conversation 
extremely wise, extremely beautiful, and we don't see people beating each other. So the Muslim, they accuse us of a drinking and they are the one who drink by barrels and they beat each other. And those are the companion of Muhammad. Do you see it? In the same time, we find that the Quran claiming that drinking alcohol is a miracle from Allah. And this verse here, nowhere it says that it's forbidden. Nowhere. It says, Ijtanibu. Which means avoid it. This is another Muslim scholar. And this is in Egypt. Egyptian cleric says, alcohol is not haram in Islam. And he is challenging them to show them one verse that says it's haram. Nowhere. And the video in front of me, I can't can play it. Egyptian cleric, Sheikh Rashid Mustafa, made a controversial statement claiming that drinking alcohol is not haram, which may not forbid under Islam. And those who say it, it is haram, it's a lie. And actually he's right. He said to you, well, show me where it says it's haram. Where it says in the verse it is haram. And he said here, well, if the alcohol even is forbidden, then God should give a punishment. So he's agreeing that his God is, you know, this book is missing, this religion is missing, missing a big, major thing. How you forbid it, but there is all those things. Did you forbid it? What is the punishment? And those are shakes. Those are not potatoes in YouTube. Like, the ketchup boy who claimed to be a sheikh, but yet he cannot read two words in Arabic. Do we have any Muslim? <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim who would like to join us? Okay. <laughs> Let us see. We have extremely extreme heat and the town there is no two no water for two days. I hope we will not lose electricity because that will be really problem. No water, no electricity. That's mean this town run by inshallah. <clears throat> Any Muslim? Uh, okay. All right, we have somebody, we have a Muslim friend, he's going to call me soon. Until then, we will see. Uh, uh, some of you sent me a text message in Patreon, and they said you have a question for me. It's your time to ask, man. The one who said you have, like, uh, maybe two of you or three of you send me emails. Remember always, you see, if you send me a question in Patreon, the first... Uh, because my typing is not so fast and my English is not so good. So answering you by email is really horrible, take a lot of time, and it's a waste of time for me because instead of answering the same question for a thousand or ten thousand people, 
I'm going to give you answer only for you. So don't ask me in Patreon. Here. Feel free. Can you give us the link about the barrel of wine? Sure. Do you want to get the barrel too? Okay, this is the barrel of wine. And this is the book, it's called Asbab al Nuzul. <clears throat> All right. As you see, this is the official Islamic website of the Kingdom of Jordan. This is not a Christian website, and this is not Christian books, and those are not our translation. I have a question about how to confront Shia Muslim about the age of Aisha, and if you cannot, what is the best way to confront Shia? First of all, my friend Shia, there are people who practice taqiyya non-stop. Even when a Muslim Shia, he speak to his wife, he have to lie to her. Lying in Shia religion is a must. Otherwise, you are not a Shia. Actually, there's a statement that says, if you don't do taqiyya, you are not a Shia. It's a must. So when you say uh, uh, con confront a Shia about the age of Aisha, will the Shia they believe that they can have sexual relationship with an infant? If we go to the book of Tahrir al-Wasila, and let your friend, you can call me right now. <laughs> we go under the topic of enjoying sexual relationship with infant. Aradiya. So how and why you need to convince him about Aisha if those people, they are willing to have sexual relationship with an infant? This is the book of Tahrir al-Wasila. It's in the front of your eyes. Volume number two, page number 241. You know, the, the question is, or the problem, or the issue number 12. It says, it is not permissible uh, to have to jump on the on the wife. You know, even even their their text is really rude and filthy. What what you know what to mean? What it mean to step on or to jump on? So they speak about the wife as if she is a goat, as 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 you are a male goat or you are a donkey, and she is a, a female donkey, and you jump on her. So it says it is not permissible to to jump on the wife before the age of nine regardless if the effing was continue or disturb, which means you marry her, divorce her, marry her, divorce her. But all other enjoyment or enjoyment, like touch with desire and hugs and tafkhid, which means putting your, your private part between her legs, it is okay. Even if she is an infant, and let me use Google translation, because they might say to you, it doesn't say that CP. You go to number 12 here. It is not permissible to have intercourse with the wife before she complete nine years old, whether the marriage is a permanent or not. As for other pleasures, such as touching with desire, embracing and the grabbing, and this is false translation, by the way, it says about putting your private part between her legs. There's nothing wrong with it. Even if she's a female, she is an infant. But let me shorten the link for you, so you can give it to your friend, the Shia, who is playing. You know, this is what they do. I mean, they 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 have the the religion of prostitution, and then they play that they are the, the they are the Virgin Mary. <laughs> and you can use Google Translation even if you don't speak Arabic. And as you see here, they confirm the age of 12. Why? Because, sorry, of 12, 9, because Muhammad, he did have intercourse at the age of 9. Let me see. I will shorten the link for you.
There's many websites they claim they shorten links, but they are fraud. Okay. This is the link in front of you. Feel free to read it. Any other question? Imagine how low, I mean, they are talking about, the dad was speaking about what? Eliminating for evil in the world. I mean, how evil can be more than this? An infant. How evil, evil can be that there is a human being, even donkeys don't do that. And they say that Islam is eliminating evil. Is it true Sunni saying Shia are not Muslims? They do drink. Okay, that will take us to our uh, to uh, to the rest of our uh, topic because you remember, you see the title it says Islam is a form of gambling. You know when a Muslim he says, like before I go live, one of the Muslims he said that Islam uh, like promise you uh, eternal life. I laugh because this is absolutely false and this is against Islam teaching. Why? Because we know that Muhammad himself, he said that Islam will be 73 sect. 73 sect. And one of them only will go to heaven. So Islam is a perfect gambling. Actually, gambling, when you play gambling, uh, they divide the papers to four, right? Is that correct? And how many papers in the card? I think it's 52. I used to play a card like when I was a teenage. Uh, so imagine, if you are playing card, Is it 52 or I'm wrong? Because I'm going to use my calculator. Is it, is it correct, 52? Uh, we divide it to four. That means your chance of winning is 13 to 52. Is that correct? I just use my calculator. It is 13 to 52. Which means you have 13 card in the game out of 52. So if we do this, if we say 52 minus 13, which is your card, that's mean your opportunity to win is 13 out of 39. Now, if we do this, if we divide 39 to 13, that means your chance to win is a three. If I'm giving the number correct. Anyway, it's like 25%. I mean, there's four people, right? It's 24, 25%. So look what will happen now. We have a religion. The founder of it saying, if you join me, Only one sect will go to heaven, and there is 72 will go to hell. I remember one a Muslim sheikh, he was saying, hey, how come you Christians are very divided? Okay, which one I'm going to go to heaven? Protestant or Catholic or Orthodox uh, Christian friends? Ah, I got you busted, don't change topic. <laughs> I said, Abdul, are you sure you want to switch topic? Because we're talking about different story, you know? He said, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I said, are you sure? You know, the Muslim, they were saying to him in the chat, brother, he is saying to you, are you sure? So don't say that. Don't say I'm sure. Don't say I'm sure. The Abdul, he wasn't looking at the chat maybe to take the advice. So he said, I'm sure. He said, okay, read this hadith for me. So he start reading. Okay. The prophet S.A.W. say that the Jews will split into 71 or 72 sect. 
the Christian will split into uh, uh, into 71 or 72 sect, and the community, my community, the Muslims, will be 73 sect. <laughs> so I said, the question I, you gave me, I will give it back to you. <laughs> Look how stupid this religion. You know, if you ask any Muslim, they will say there's millions of Christian sect. What are you talking about? But if this is true, that means Muhammad is true is a truly, truly a false prophet, because you're a prophet. And look, Muhammad is not sure, huh? You know, listen, 71, 72, but he's sure it's one of, like 71 or 72, because the Muslim will be 73 guaranteed. And now if we count how many Muslim sect, it's endless. Gambling. So when a Muslim, he lied to you and he says, Islam promised you salvation, how you can receive salvation if you do not know which sect? They will say to you, a jama'ah, 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 I mean group, or jama'ah. What, what's a stupid answer? They ask Muhammad, who are those uh, sect? He said, a jama'ah. <laughs> the group, which one? Well, all of them they are a group, this one they call them sect. Do you see it? This hadith here says, let me zoom in, so maybe you can see it better in the text. The children of Israel will be into 71 sect. My nation will split into 72. But look, 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 Muhammad, look the fool. In the previous hadith, he said, his nation will be 73. This idiot, he don't remember what he said yesterday. Yesterday he said 73, today he's 72. Do you see it? Is this hadith is sahih? It is sahih. So how this hadith can be sahih saying 72, and how the previous hadith saying 73 can be sahih too? How both can be sahih? You are talking about numbers, remember? I wasn't talking about meaning. Numbers, it's, it's very simple. Even this one, you want to make games with it? Is it 72 the Muslim will be, or 73? And all of them, they are sahih. Sahih, brother. The religion of Sahih, brother. Hmm? What we will do now? Which one of them? Which one? Sahih. Sahih. So Islam, for true, is a form of gambling. It is a gambling, because when you join this cult, it's not only a sexual cult, it is a gambling. And you, you know you are a loser, because there's no way there's God. He promised you if you go and hate the other neighbors, that he will give you a lot of women for sex. You, are, you must be stupid. You must be certified idiot. I mean, what kind of God he promised me I mean, this is what God he do? You open your door, you find a box full of women? Surprise, and they are naked. This is God. This is not the devil, this is God. And then what do you do after that? Allah, he promised you that your penis will never go limp. Never go limp? Yeah, you want you want uh, you want the penis go limp, and now it's time to use it. You want to be in the limbo. And then they start talking about morality. Morality. Look who is talking. Eliminating evil. Look who is talking. Let us see this hadith. 
Yeah, we can't write in English. Uh, and then try something else. Yeah, I just show this one. This one will do. This is God, my friend. This is God talking. The God inspired Muhammad. So the God of Islam is going to import women from hell. They are from hell. And why they are imported from hell? Because simply they are so, so good and boom, boom. They have a skills, brother. They have a long resume. Do you see what it says? Muhammad is swearing saying, there's no one whom Allah will admit to paradise, but Allah will marry him to 72 wives. This is the lowest reward, by the way. From the Huris and, 70, and 72 from his inheritance. Two from the Huris and 72 from, 70 from the inheritance. From the people of hell. So every Muslim, he have a group of people he will inherit it's as if you are a property, you know? So he will inherit women from hell, all of them, all of them, they have desirable front passages. <laughs> what is the... Uh, chapter 5, verse number 51 applies only for wage war against Muslims. They quote verse 69, encounter for our argument. Well, there's no Muslim can encounter that argument because that would be stupid of them. For a very simple reason, the verse there says, take not Christian and Jews, doesn't say those who they are fighting you. And the Christian, they were not even fighting Muhammad. So take a Christian, take not Christians and Jews as a friends, for they are friends of each other. So it doesn't talk about those who they are fighting you. Secondly, when a Muslim, he says to you, uh, well, the response to that is a chapter 60, verse number 9. This verse. And I will show you what Muslim themselves they say about it. You will laugh. What does this have to do first with the other verse? This one it says, uh, don't, uh, Allah did not forbid you regard those who did not wage a war against you to be uh, 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 good to them. If you read the story, you will find this is a story about the mother of Aisha. She came and she brought a gift for her. The mother of Aisha, she refused to become a Muslim. So Muhammad, in order to accept the money, he said to her, it's okay, you know, they, they are not fighting us, it's okay, you know, you know she didn't accept Islam, so okay, you know. She is not even a she is not even a Christian. <laughs> she is not even a Jew. She is a pagan. So they they fabricate and they lie, and this is not really what it's meant. This is why Muhammad he says in chapter nine, verse number ninety nine, the twenty nine. Sorry, fight those who don't believe in Allah, not the one who fight you. Muhammad he sent the letter to the king of the Roman, saying to them in Jerusalem, the ruler, convert or die. Aslam to Aslam. So how that have to do with this? They are hypocrite liars. And then you should ask him, do the Christian and the Middle East, they have to pay jizya? He say yes. He, he said to them, everyone? He say yes, everyone. Okay, well that's mean. Islam in war with everybody. Islam, my friend, is in war with anyone. Anyone who don't accept Islam is in war. So when you go to chapter five or chapter nine, why we cannot take them as a friends? Simply because they are not believing in Prophet Muhammad. They are enemies. Actually, I will show you a better verse. A clear verse in the Quran saying, you will not find a single Muslim 
you will not find a single Muslim being or in love with those who oppose Allah Prophet, not in war with him. Those are your family. Let us see. Let's see who is texting. Okay, we are still waiting for this guy who is supposed to be a Muslim. Uh, to text us and join us. Chapter 58, chapter 58 says, verse number 22, this is the last verse. You will not find one of those who believe in Allah and the last day, making friendship with those who oppose Allah and his messenger. They are opposing him, that's it. They are not in war, they are opposing. Even if they are their father, their sons, their brothers, their kindred, for such he has written faith in their heart. See, even your family, you can't be friend with them. So where is the war? Your son, your brother, your mother, your father, your sister. So my friend, always there is something easy to prove. Isn't it the Bible says, from their fruit you shall know them? So if the Muslim they says, well, we can take you as a friend, so why you invade us? And where in the verse it says, take a friend, don't take a friend, those who they are fighting you. Can we read the interpretation for the verse? Open the interpretation for them, you will see it says clearly. You cannot take Christians and Jews as friends. Yeah, I will go. This is Ibn Kathir. Anyone is not embracing Islam, he is in war with Allah. And if you are a fool, they can fool you. But you know, I always say, if a fool like Muhammad can fool you, well, how foolish are you? I mean, this is the most dumb idiot ever in history. The most obvious stupid prophet. Read carefully. Allah forbid his believing servant from having Jews and the Christians as a friend. Suddenly, suddenly you see, if somebody is saying to you they are in war with us, how they can be your friends anyway? I mean, do you see even this, how, how stupid the answer is? If the Quran is saying that don't, don't take them as friends, that's mean take them as enemies. So who is the one forcing enmity? In chapter 5, verse 14, the Quran says, Allah will spread hatred and enmity between the Christian until the day of judgment. <laughs> so the verse itself, refuting them, why you don't use your brain? I want to take you as a friend. The verse saying, take not Christian and Jews as friends, but if we are enemy, we will not take you as a friend. Do you, do you know what I mean? How we are in war, and I want to take you as a friend. So this is not about people in war, this is about people who they are in peace. A Christian, a Jew, he want to be a friend to you. You are forbidden. However, in chapter 3, verse number 28, it says, you can take them as a friend as long you don't mean to do so, which means you are lying. Speaking